G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpigs. Story of a sunken fishing trawler making a whole bunch of stuff with some people to do some things at a place where we go and have fun. Today we've got to do a bit of prep. So we've got Bruce arriving in a couple of days time. He's the commercial welder that helped us put the doublers for the wings onto the hull. We're gonna get him to uh, quote on some hull plating and everything under the hull. Um, it's something that Trev and I could do, um, but it would take us probably three or four times longer than to get him to do it. We've got a couple of challenges that me and Trev have to solve with our wings. We can't physically get them out of the slider, so we have to come up with a solution for that. We'll show you what's going on and how we're thinking of fixing it. There's a lot of crap that's sort of sat underneath Brewpeg over the years. It's like random tools and stuff that's died and whatever. We need to get right in. So the hull plating that Bruce needs to look at doing there's a little, that square you can see on the keel, that needs to be, um, I need to sandblast that and then he needs to weld it up. Um, the reason I'm not welding that up is because I don't have the tools to do that. Um, there's cement hard up against the steel behind it and every time I weld it, my weld is not hot enough and it just cracks the weld. So he's got to get in there with a, a basically a stronger welder and, and fix that up. And then one of the things I'm really not chuffed about, these things. See if you can see those hull plates, They're just there's like five different hull plates and they're welded in um, and some of them are good, some of them are garbage and overall I just, I really don't have confidence in them. It was something that I did years ago when I didn't necessarily know, I didn't know that I was doing it wrong if that makes sense. Um, so before we launch we're going to rip those out and just put a new piece of steel in. Now one of the challenges is half of this plate is underneath the keel cooling pipes. So we're keeping our keel cooling pipes for now but we may have to take those off to fix it. So what we're thinking, we're gonna clear all the garbage out under the boat, and then you've got these tags that hold the keel cooling pipe up on just onto the hull there. So there's a couple there, and there's a few as it goes all the way around the boat. But if you have a look through there, those two pipes sticking up is the water in, water out, and that's the most solid part of the keel cooling. So it's not like we can just cut the tags and drop it and weld the plates. We might literally have to cut through those and take the keel cooling off altogether in order to be able to get to those plates. So yeah, Bruce is coming on Monday, we'll figure out how we're going to do it then. Ali and Bella settled in like they've always been part of the boat, it was awesome, we got quite a lot of work done and not long in a couple of weeks. Uh, Ali got some news from home, some great news and uh, she wants to go and be with her family to celebrate. The good thing about a month's trial is it gives everyone a chance to check that it's the right thing for them. Two weeks with someone so incredibly passionate was a real gift. I'm very grateful. Yep. Life goes on. <laughs> Dane made a big cutting table for the insulation because we've got to get onto that so we've got quite a bit to do before we hit the water. One of the things we need to do, because this is just a piece of plywood, it's a wee bit floppy, so I've got down the back on the trailer over there, I've got a couple of lengths, 2.4 metre long lengths of uh, uh, wall stud. We're going to um, fasten that to the side of the bench and that's going to give us a nice firm solid table. So we've temporarily given up on the winches on the roof. Our A-frame is not working, it's too dodgy. so. For safety's sake, we're abandoning that and we're going back to the winch and the door like we did on the other wing. Now to do that, we're gonna be making a little gadget so we can lift from. One of the troubles with the mag drill is if you wanna drill anything like that, which is quite small, you have to hang it over the edge. So I made a hole in my workbench so that I now have a drill press. This is our safety lifting gadget. It's basically a bit of 10 mil steel, a couple of 32 mil holes knocked in it and a pin so that it won't come out. Um, and that means that we're lifting from the stainless pin uh, that the arm is normally held from. The reason we want to lift from here rather than our normal spot down on the end of the wing down here is because we can get the cable underneath the arm up the top there. So as we lift it, the cable, it's like, at the moment you can sort of see it's going over top of the arm so we physically can't lift it. Whereas by doing this, we can swap the cable underneath. Ignore the frame up on the roof, that's not being used anymore. We're going to be lifting from the door like we did on the first wing. What we need to do is align the uh, second slider on this side. We've got the rear slider organized and we now need to do the front slider. So to do that we have to lift the wing up and down so that we can measure how far out we are in terms of our measurements um, with the alignment. But that allows us to then start moving onto the pulleys. We start at the bottom pulley, then move up onto the top pulley and then finally the winch and it's a process of elimination. Wings up. 
So this is the first time we've had it this close to the hull. It's still not tucked in. It'll go in another probably 125 mil, six inches or so. So you can see there's a wee bit of a gap all out there, but that's going to get tighter and tighter again. So what we, you can see right at the top, I zoom right in. You can see up there the pin is not sitting in the slider. It'll go in by that much, so that's about six inches or so, maybe more, seven inches. Um, what we're trying to do is figure out our alignment. Now, if you can see up there, the back half of the arm is not touching the slider, and the front half of the arm is touching the slider. So we have to move the front slider in. Works out to be about 30 mil, something like that, just over an inch, inch and a quarter, something like that. Um, so there has to be a twist on the sliders that aligns with the hinge. So if you come down and put a line straight through from center to center on those two hinge pins, that's the plane that you have to line the sliders up with. In terms of vertical alignment, they're actually pretty close to where they need to be. So they look like they're sloping back and the arm looks like it's kind of sloping forward and all that sort of stuff, but that's all irrelevant. What matters is where the pins sit on the slider itself. So the sliders are pretty much within sort of maybe an inch of where they need to be. So we're just about there on the alignment of these guys. So you can see here, we've got the winch and the door and everything, two to one purchase, but you can see that the cheeks on the arm will come up and they'll tuck up inside these sliders here. So we can't lift basically through the slider like we are now because obviously the arm needs to travel up and down through there. So we need to move the lifting points outside of those sliders. So we're gonna be moving it probably to the back arm um, because that's the one that allows us to lift as close as we can to the center of the wing. Um, and then we'll run cabling up to the roof, etc., and over to the winch that's on top of the wheelhouse. So up on top, we have our winching system. We have our sliders, and uh, we need to do our measurements just down here on the deck so that you can sort of figure out where to get this alignment right. So you can see this gap here. That number is how much we have to bring this one in. So that's the next step. What was that? So did I! Yeah. I did it. Wasn't that the information we had? That was the best information we had at the time. That was the best information, right. It was shit information. But it, it didn't rain, no, did no, it? No, it didn't rain. Right, right. We're back up the top with all of the wind. Um, we're going to cut the slider off, move it inwards six millimetres. Um, the back one actually doesn't need to move forward and back at all. That's going to be our point of truth. So we'll trim it off and we'll tack this in the new position. Right, I'm just going to trim this back. Okay, that one's in. There we go. Yeah, alright, I'm just gonna punch through the roof. We're working towards being able to use the winch up here rather than the winch down there. Okay, so windy day, it's probably, I don't know, 20, 25 knots at times up on the top here. It's probably only 10 or 15 down on the ground, but that's because we're sort of sheltered down on the ground. It's not necessarily because it's not windy. This is what we get in the summer, or coming into the summer, we get pretty strong trades up here. Mark anything else there? I've got the top of the wing here. Yeah. It's quite good for fitness working on this boat because <laughs> um, you normally do about 40, 45 up and down the stairs a day. And then if you're doing something like this, you're up and down on top of the wheelhouse, probably another 20.
So we've got it, they're aligned. So parallel that way, and they're also aligned, you know, forward to back that way. So what the next plan is, the back one is the, um, the most aligned. So we're gonna weld that in permanently. We're gonna put our pulley mounts and everything, cause that's the one that's gonna be doing the, the lifting. Um, and then we're gonna use that as our point of truth. The front one has a very slight bow in it like that. Um, either we didn't take enough out when we were straightening them or it's, you know, bowed a little bit with welding or something like that, um, but, we can straighten that out with the endless chain. We'll just put a little bit more bend back into it. Think of it like bending a bow and arrow. I'm gonna put a little bit of bend into it, and then we'll, it's only probably three mil, something like that. And then we'll weld it up with our bulwarks when we build the side of the boat back in, and also our vertical strengthening. Trev's got his parts laid out on the bench down there. So we've got some um, half inch thick, 150 mil flat bar. So he's gonna, what he's measuring now is going to become a vertical stabilizer or a vertical stiffener. Um, and that's going to provide a lot of strength to these um, sliders so they won't necessarily be trying to support a lot of weight on their own this will be doing the bulk of it and then those other bigger plates is the six mil um, seconds uh, it's just it's basically second steel so it's not not first grade steel we don't need first grade it's just going to the side of the bulwarks and we'll weld that in and um, start filling up the rest of the side of the the, uh, the hull my job now is to get out on the side of the boat and um, weld that uh, slider in so we're going to weld it fully around the bottom get it in there so that it's not going to move anymore and then we'll start tacking in the 12 mil thick or the half inch 12.75 uh, half inch um, vertical stabilizer so just done an amazing weld camera cut out battery went flat okay maybe it wasn't amazing but you know we welded it all around here that's been uh, triple continuous welded both sides I did a single weld all the way around on the inside but I've done triple on the outside so that's not going anywhere, that's, that's in position. What we're gonna do now, we'll weld in the vertical stiffener. So Trev's down there just cutting up a piece of six mil plate. That's gonna become the skin that goes in that gap that you can see there. So we've got a bit of 75 by six weld on the top. That's the same as what we got around the rest of the bullets at the top. So we'll weld that in and blend it in. We've got our vertical piece of, uh, what is that, half inch, 12.75. There you go, you can see it in context. So it sort of sits vertically behind the, stabilizer, uh, behind the uh, slider that way. So that's going to do the vertical stiffness and re really give that bullock a lot of strength. Um, and it's also going to be where we do our lifting point from. So now we need to dog that bottom out, eh? Will that fit against the cabin wall? No, nah, it's too short. Oh, hang on, I'll just wedge it.
where do we get to? We've got one side rebuilt, so you can sort of see we've got our vertical stabiliser down there. See it sort of tacked into place. We've got the top uh, welded in, and then we've also got the uh, side of the hull basically linking up the bullet to the deck. This slider down here is tacked in, um, that, uh, sorry, welded in fully. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of tacks you can see tacking in that plate. So we need to basically dog that uh, hull plate back together because if you spin it around, if you look down there, we were hard to see on the camera, they don't quite line up, they're a couple of mil out. So we'll dog those back so that they're bang on. But that's a nice strong layer, I'm really happy with that. And then we'll do exactly the same on the other side. The other side's yet to be rebuilt and so on. Um, but this here is going to be the basis of our lifting point. So that'll make sense tomorrow when you sort of see what we're going to do. We've got to make some stainless cheeks and everything to deal with our Ronston uh, RF135 sheaths. So that's a wire rope sheath, oil impregnated nylon I think they use. But um, yeah, good day. So port side sliders are now aligned, which is something I haven't been able to say, period. Um, so really stoked with how that worked out. Tomorrow we'll get our proper winching set up. So the, the winch and the door work fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's a bit sort of pickledy pickledy. Tomorrow we're going to try and get our sheaths and pulleys and everything all built and our proper lifting points because that way we'll be able to use the winch that's on the wheelhouse, that like the proper layout. Um, so yeah, that'll be pretty cool. The, the wings will be able to safely come up and down fully. There should be no more um, temporary systems, etc., holding everything together. One thing we do need to do is make a... Um, an exit point for the arm. Now this is the challenge that we were stuck on. The, the arm, when we weld the arms in, we literally can't get them out. They're, they're welded in place, all the pins and everything, just they don't allow the arm to come out of the sliders. Um, so we have to be able to take them out for maintenance. Now one of the thoughts that we had was actually making a little, um, like a, I suppose you could think of it like a, a gate or a cutout. We're gonna cut a piece out of the slider that allows the um, the arm to come in and out when we want it to, and then we'll have a like a, a lid that'll bolt, bolt over top. That's our solution. Um, again, that'll make more sense tomorrow when we start making that. I think Trev will make that, and I'll start working on um, some parts for the winch that are needed up top. So that's us for today. We'll sign off, and then we'll get straight back into it in the morning. So that's our last measurement before the roof, isn't it? It is. Uh, okay, let's uh, lift it up to the roof then. Oh, have I missed something? What's the significance of those of that measurement? Oh, Jess just wants to know if we can put a panel or something on the inside. She just wants to know how far in it comes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, and I'm curious too. It's yeah, way yeah. less than I thought it was going to be. That's fair, right? Yeah. Come right in. Keep going. That's as tight as you'll get. That is literally as tight as we'll get the arm in and the wing in. Okay. So that's tucked up lovely. Look at that. This is the first time we've seen the wing tucked right up. So on the inside, this is how it sits. We've basically got the um, cheeks pretty close to the hull. The wing itself, see if I can, there you go, you can sort of see it's maybe 50 mil gap, something like that. And that'll get tighter when we modify our hinges and put the other hinges on. But for now, that's blimmin' awesome. Let me show you from the front. Looking along the length of the hull, you got your sliders and the wing tucked up nice and tight into the hull. Nice and snug, it's exactly as we designed it. Now, um, at the front here, you can sort of see it's away from the hull a wee bit. There's probably a 50 mil gap all the way down the hull. 
maybe 60 mil or something like that. Um, that's going to get tighter when we put our other hinges on, but that's really acceptable. We could drive around like that without it being a drama. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. First time we've seen them up properly. Also, that thing's sticking out across the roof, out towards the middle of nowhere. That's actually just a big selfie stick that I made for a GoPro. So, um, yes, not a permanent fixture. After many brain things inside of our heads, we have come up with a plan to show you what we're building. This piece of stainless that Trev's got here is a piece that I spent a lot of money getting a wonderful shape, laser cut out, and then we got a very, very specific um, measurement machined out of that pin size there, and then we threw it all in the scrap bin because we weren't using any of it. So what we're doing now is redesigning it into totally different pulleys. So the plan. This is the size pulley that we're using here. It's a five inch pulley. We're going to slice it off across there. We're going to have two little legs. These will get welded to the roof. We're going to have um, clearance all the way around. So they're going to sit basically like that. Yeah, there we go, look at that. It's going to sit like that. We're going to radius the corners off. You see the pulley sits in this area here, and then we'll have some clearance around here. What we're going to do is radius this down as well. We'll weld a flat uh, between the two cheeks. We'll weld a flat all the way around and that'll stop the wire from pinging out. Okay, so that's ready to drill and tap. Right, this is the plan. We've got a bunch of these, which is just a 12 mil thick stainless offcut, 316 I think this was. Um, we're going to use this as the cheeks for our pulley that's near the top of the box. So there's gonna be two of these stacked side by side like that. They're going to get a, this is four inch, but we're going to get a three inch pulley that gets slotted in the middle here. We'll have a clearance hole going right through, um, which will just put a pin and a, uh, like a circlip or, you know, split pin, that sort of thing. Um, keeps it nice and simple. There's no threads to gall up because everybody loves that. And then what we're going to do at the top here, we're going to drill a 16 mil hole right the way through. I've got some stainless 16 mil rod. We're going to put that through, tig it on, and that's going to become the point where we bring our two to one purchase back. So it'll go... Um, from the wheelhouse down to this pulley here and out to the wing. It'll go around a pulley on the wing and then back to the 16 mil um, stainless rod that we're going to put through this end here. I'll do the 8, you do the 16. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do two 8s and <laughs> it'll make the 16. And I probably won't do a 16. <laughs> well, if we... Um, we can drill them all together, can't we? Yeah, actually that's probably not a shabby idea. Let's do it that way because then they're all identical. Mm. Look at this, we managed to resurrect a dodgy, dodgy drill press. Dodgy brother. So it's working. The full capacity unleashed is putting a 3.2 millimeter hole into the stainless. We've got two inches of stainless to drill. And we're gonna spin around. We've got an eight mil that has to go through. We've got an 8mm that has to go through, then we're going to put a 12mm, or actually it's half inch, 12.75mm. And then we're going to finish with a 16mm, and that's going to be our mount uh, for the return for our 2 to 1 purchase. This is the pin size for the first pulley and we're going to upgrade eventually and it'll become a half inch hole, but for now we're leaving it at 8mm. And then yeah, 16mm for our return. Holy crap, it's actually working. Right, so you just saw me cut a stonking great hole in the side of the boat so that we can fit this. Let me show you what we're building. It goes that way around. So, a couple of stainless cheeks. We've got an 8mm hole here because the pulley we're using initially has an 8mm pin, but that's going to get um, enlarged later on. We have a 16mm pin that's a floating pin, goes through this hole up the top here. It's floating, but I can't float it. Um, that's going to be where our cable returns to. So, we're going to have a pulley here that goes around down to the wing. On a two to one purchase it sits like that and then the cable comes back and fastens up into that area there into that top return so what we're going to do now is weld the inside cheek onto this um, stabilizing arm here or whatever you want to call it vertical stabilizer um, we'll weld that in there with the alignment so that it points with the hole in here, with the hole in here. Yeah. that's right we're putting a hole in here good thinking so we're going to notch out a little bit of um, this stiffener here and that's so that we can get the pin that's central. Um, that way we can just use a, um, a like a shanked bolt, a stainless shanked bolt. 
and we can put a socket on this end and a nylock on the other and that's going to be enough to hold the whole thing together. It means we don't have to make a pin with circlips and start getting complex, we can just use something off the shelf and it means we can keep a heap of spares quite easily too. Now for the smarty pants as this is in the audience, this is a floating pin. People are going to say, yes but that could float out, that's not what you want. So Trev's plan, drill a 4mm hole from this side right through to the other side over here. We're going to put a pin through and uh, open it up at the other side and that's going to stop that floating pin from floating. People often wonder quite a lot of stuff about this project, like why is it taking so damn long? Why did you buy a boat such a stupid size? And what's the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Well I'm going to answer some of those questions. The airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow is really difficult to answer given I don't know if it's a European or an African swallow. However, why is this boat taking so long? I can answer that. This bracket has taken us a day and a half to figure out and it looks incredibly simple and that's why there's a day and a half in it is because it looks simple. We had the most complex and elaborate ideas to try and solve this. It got simpler and simpler the more we thought about it and now I think we've got a pretty elegant little solution. So I'll show you what this looks like when we've tacked it up in place. Get it facing this way. Yes, so we, we need to probably shave a bit off that one, don't we? Alright, so I'll just do a I'll just do an attack and we'll jiggle it there. You want, there? you want your helmet? No, I'm just gonna just shut my eyes. Yeah. You okay, ready? Yeah. We are starting to get somewhere. You can see we've got a pulley bracket tacked on to the wing. This is all 6mm stainless and then this over the back here is 12mm uh, stainless with a 16mm pin at the top. That pulley is just a, um, it's a placeholder basically. We're getting a bigger pulley, it's on order, but we've spaced it out so that it fits the new one. That is going to be the bracket. We obviously will we'll build in some steel around it and everything, but that's going to be um, the bracket that directs it out over the side. It's going to go out to the wing over here and go around that pulley and then come back and hook into that 16mm bar at the top of the stainless bracket. Now from the back of this pulley here, it's going to travel up the side of the slider right the way up. With our two pulleys down the bottom aligned, tacked, they're not going to move anywhere, they're exactly where we want them. We're going to start working on the top pulley which is the one uh, that goes between, it's basically on the roof at the back here and it goes between the winch and the bottom pulley. What we need to do is knock a 34mm hole in the roof, um, we're going to use the mag drill to do that and the reason we need to knock a hole that big is we're going to be putting a handrail through the roof so um, that's the one that's going to hide the cable and that's also going to determine the alignment of the top pulley. We don't have to come out significantly to clear it do we? Come out with your winch a little bit, just oh, yeah. towards you. Yep. I'm having a few ideas and thoughts about this. I'm not 100% confident or happy with the way that it's mounted. So that's a work in progress and liable to change. But you know, that's boat building. In fact, you could describe most boat builders as that, you know, a work in progress and liable to change. That's your angle there. I've got a 32 mil drill bit. <laughs> you laugh. I'm serious. Yes, I think we should stop for some food. Sounds good. Yeah, little roast. Best laid plans of mice and men and all that sort of stuff. We shan't be mag drilling. We have no room. But I probably will um, drill it out with my battery drill, even though it's a 34 mil hole. I got a 34 mil drill bit that fits in my battery drill. I have drilled a 32mm hole with it before, so 
I think we'll do that. I suppose I could plasma it, but that's pretty messy. I don't want to do that. So there she is with her wings tucked up nice and tight. They really don't stick out much. I'm guessing that's the wing's about 100 mil ish thick, maybe maybe more, maybe 120 tops, and then it's probably 50 mil out. So you're looking six inches from the side of the hull is the maximum deflection, and that's going to come in once we get our new hinges done eventually. Um, there's no rush on those, but when they get done, that's going to tuck that in even tighter, and you can sort of see. If I zoom right over this side. There you go, you can kind of see, the bottom will come in, the top's fine, the top will stay where it needs to go, it'll probably come in a fraction when we move the, the hinge in, but overall that's come out really good, I'm stoked with that. So this is the first time we've sort of seen them up completely like they will be sitting when we're at docks. Brewpeak does have wings. In order to get the arms in and out of our sliders, we have to make a little adaption to each slider so that we can remove them when we need to start maintenance. I'll show you what we did. The slider itself is basically a solid U channel, and then if I spin around, there's a cutout. So that cutout is on both sides, so you can see there's another one over there with that green thing's dangling through. And what that does is it allows us to lift the wing up, um, I don't know, six inches or something from the resting position and we can just pull the pins on the arm, literally lift the arm straight out those slots. Now we will be putting a piece of steel that bolts in on the outside, um, and it'll have a plastic bracket that makes the internal dimensions exactly the same all the way through, so you won't see that step, but it allows us to maintain the arm whenever we need to take that arm off. Sugarcane burn off started already this year. The guys will carry on with the pulleys and get that done next week. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I'd die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it